Yeah, yeah. Guys, we are so excited for today's chat. We could not be more excited to have the absolutely beautiful Carmela here with us today. Welcome, everyone. I hope you guys are ready to learn all of the things about breathwork. Um, we are so, so lucky to have Carmela here with us. Um, so a little bit about her. We're just going to dive right in because... Uh, we have so much to talk about, so many questions to ask, and we have so much to learn. So we're just going to dive all up in there. So Carmela, let's uh, introduce her real quick. She is a certified Kundalini Research Institute teacher, and she is a founder of A Tribe Called Breath. A Tribe Called Breath focuses on utilizing ancient tools in the modern world to guide you to a deeper, more experience of yourself. So we've had the pleasure of having Carmela as a special guest in the past in our Fuego Fitness classes, and we could not be more excited to have her back here on our Clubhouse Chats for Season 2 for Holistic Fitness to share her expertise in more depth with all of you. So, um, she is at the moment getting her, um, her logistics and tech set up right now. So, um, but in the meantime, if anybody, uh, just so that everybody knows, this is going to be an open table discussion. Um, and it's not really like interview style. Um, we're just kind of gonna go with the flow and ask her questions as they come up. With that said, if you guys have any questions that you're dying to know or um, anything that comes up during the conversation, please feel free to raise your hand and um, jump in and then we will um, gladly just jump in on the conversation, like ask, ask away or if you have any other insights or thoughts or whatever it is. Um, but awesome. I love it. Um, and also, you know, just so... Just kind of, I guess, like a little a little thing on breath work for us, right? If you've taken a Fuego Fitness class, you've probably noticed that we always, always, always stress the importance of breathing. Um, one, for, you know, to establish control. Two, for, um, like, your heart rate, to help establish heart rate. So these are all things that the beautiful Carmela is also going to help us dive into and talk about. But we just kind of, you know... Want, want it to come full circle. So especially for those of you that do Fuego with us often, um, this is this is the chance. You know, if you ever hear us in class and you're like, why do they keep talking about breath? Or why do they keep saying all this stuff? Like, these are this is the time for you guys to ask those questions and we will, you know, dive in, do our best to help answer. So, yay. All right, yeah, so you guys, breath work obviously um, is a big thing for us, like Luis was saying. And I mean, I think that, a lot of the times, and it's funny, we were talking about this last week, when we're going through the motions and we're going through, you know, whether it's during the day or, um, you know, just going through our life, like how many times a day do you actually think about breathing, right? Never, really. You're not, you're like, it's such like a passive thing that we do. And it's crazy to me. And actually, it's funny, this morning I, I took a class and the instructor reminded me, she said, well, she was telling, talking to us about how she spoke to this elder, this group of elderly people. And she said, you know, these people like didn't have, they, they, they were like ready. They were just waiting to die, which is crazy. I know this is like getting in a dark hole, but um, they were like, didn't have, they didn't feel like they had a purpose anymore. They felt like, okay, like there's nothing else to live for. And she reminded them like, look, as long as you are breathing, you're alive. And as long as you're alive, you have more to give, you have more to do, you have more to see, you have more to experience, you have more stories to tell you, you know, like, and we just take breathing for granted, which is like absolutely absurd. And I am guilty of it. I do it. Um, and it's just one of those things that, you know, I want to incorporate more into my life because I know the power of it, how incredibly, you know, how incredibly powerful it is for, for energy, for everything. And honestly, I'm going to stop talking because Carmela has so much more to say about this than I do. But I just want to just preface everything by saying like breathwork is the literally the most important thing we can possibly do in our lives because it's what keeps us alive. Um, so. Without further ado, <laughs> please welcome the beautiful, the one and only, Carmela. Okay, my love, can, can you hear me? Yes, 
hear me? I'm unmuted on Clubhouse. So this is good. We're good. <laughs> You're all protected. Okay, we're on here. Greetings. I'm Carmela, and yeah, I have fallen deeply in love with the practice through Kundalini Yoga training and teacher training, and there, that's a, it's a huge, huge arsenal of tools within Kundalini Yoga. There's, you know. What I've done with the breath classes, diving into that, is just one little kind of facet that I kind of felt transformed my psyche, my life. It took me just on a completely different trajectory by honing in on my breath. And I love what you were saying about that. Like, it's it's the thing that we first do when we get to Earth. It's the thing that we'll do when we last leave Earth, right? So in between, are we thinking about it at all? And so I was thinking about it, and I'm like, if... Breath is life because when that's no longer there, we're no longer here. It's just the body and that's done with, right? Um, If we're not consciously breathing, then that means we're unconsciously living. And I'm like, dang, that kind of hits hard. (laughs) Right? Because it's like, no, I'm super conscious. I'm all with this. I'm good, you know? But it's like, no, it's like, that's your life force that's the thing that delivers your breath delivers information to every single part of your body your brain your blood your organs your thoughts all of it so if that's not consciously happening and on a deep like within depth within your system every day there's a lot of unconscious programming within our minds within our bodies within our lives that's still taking place so when i dove into that and i was like if i can consciously breath by breath each day be aware of this force coming in and out then I can really start to change the trajectory and really go in a purposeful direction I love that so much um it's I mean it couldn't be more true so for everybody listening right now start right now like let's let's just take a really quick deep breath like let's just Take this moment just to breathe for one second. (sighs) Yeah, right? How powerful is that? (laughs) It's just, also, it feels so good. It just feels so good to do it. Uh, To be more conscious about it in our daily lives, like, why wouldn't we want to be doing that? So, um, Carmela, I would love to know, just give us a little introduction about what, specifically kundalini breath work is for someone who may have never heard of it before so if you just look at kundalini breath work and then you just take breath work so forget about kundalini for just a second breath work what is breath work breath work is simply conscious breathing and you can practice conscious breathing anywhere right if it's your 20 minute practice in kundalini or if you're practicing it just breathing in and out while you're in traffic going to work that's breath work if you're consciously breathing because conscious breathing just means that you're breathing deeper into your system when you're breathing deeper into your system you're bringing more oxygen into your system when you have more oxygen going up into your brain in through your blood your body turns into an alkaline environment in an alkaline environment dis-ease can't exist only in acidic environments right so that goes with your thought forms that goes with what's happening in your internal organs that's that's breath work it's just being conscious about over oxygenating your body so that you have more life and informative life to kind of respond right now really freshly and purely okay so breath work that's breath work when you add kundalini before that kundalini is an ancient technology that yogis have been practicing for over five thousand years and they used to sit around and from my knowledge of the scripture and just training and things like that you know they they knew that we had this latent kind of capacity sitting at the base of our spine which is like right above that root um area so your chakra number one right down there and they knew that consciousness kind of resides there un unmanifested if nothing is ever activated so they're like okay how do we get this energy from chakra number one at our root at our earth all the way up into these higher centers of the brain and so they started you know 
doing these self experiments with postures and mudras, hand positionings, and breath patterns, and sound currents through mantra and these kinds of things. So Kundalini is just an ancient um, technology that has all of this arsenal of tools to try to get that latent Kundalini energy at the base of your spine up into the higher centers of the brain so that you can live from an elevated state of consciousness when you're going through your every single day life. Awesome. I also just have, I guess, a kind of follow-up question because I know I've taken a couple classes with you, but when you say posture and like hand placements, is there, you know, a specific or a couple in particular? Like, is there a specific way you practice? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a million different postures and a million different. Um, so it's like anytime. So when you guys have come to class, and you know, if we're doing, if I say, put your hands in Gyan Mudra which is a hand posture, right? So Gyan Mudra is just where you take your index finger and place it to the thumb. Mm -hmm. And they say that this is connected to Jupiter, this is your ego, and when you activate these certain um, mudras, it allows certain energetic flows to happen in the body. Mm -hmm. So we have all of these like 72,000 nerve endings running through our bodies, and so whenever you place certain places on whatever you're doing with your hands it actually allows very specific energetic frequencies to run through the body and then kind of relay to the brain and then like i said with the postures kundalini is a lot of you know like when we're breathing if we're breathing and just doing this you know it's so a posture is just kind of a movement that you're holding in while you're synchronizing that breath to get to get information, to get oxygen into these kind of places that we may not typically be ever breathing into. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. It's also, you know, it, it, think about it, it. That makes me think about when you're doing, like, I always, of course, go right straight to exercise. It's like I always mm -hmm. tell people in, in our classes, like, do everything consciously because then you'll know what muscles are being recruited. And when you know what muscles are being recruited, then you're actually going to activate them better. You'll breathe into those muscles better. There'll be more oxygen flow, more blood flow, and it'll just be more, a more effective workout. And so now, like, that just makes sense. I, like, thank you for explaining that. No, um, exactly. Yeah. So I also wanted to talk about these, like, just in class as well when I've taken class with you like I've practiced with you a few times and sometimes like let's get deep here real quick but like sometimes like it like elicits a lot of emotions like sometimes I found myself like crying sometimes I find myself laughing sometimes I like I feel like my body temperature changing so how are emotions and how are all those things connected to the breath yeah, that's a beautiful question. It's one of my favorite parts about um, Kundalini breathwork and why I got so into the breath is because when I first started practicing, I would be in these classes and, you know, we would go into a breath and we're doing breath of fire. <laughs> and you're like, what am I doing? Like, why am I doing this weird breath? Like, this, all oh, this is weird. And then after, you know, a 60-minute class, you would get done and I'm sobbing and I feel... I feel absolutely super emotional, but also there's there was there's this peace, there's this space inside me that like a spaciousness that I'd never felt before, and you know like certain things were starting to come into my mind, thoughts that I had never had before, and I'm just like, what is like what what causes this breath to do all of these kind of physiological, neurological, psycho like psyche changes, right? And so when I think about why sometimes you're crying and all that stuff happens is like emotions if you think of the word emotion the last part of it is emotion right so our emotions should be constantly in motions emotions are not meant to be solid fixtures right so when we experience something emotionally what's meant to happen is something emo evokes an emotion we're supposed to allow it to come in we feel it we experience it we understand it and then we let it flow out of us because life is like this, you know, we're always going to be feeling and experiencing different things. So if we were to let that emotion just stay, that's not going to be correct for the next moment because the next moment elicits something completely new. Mm -hmm. And so when we do breath work, 
humans kind of have this tendency when we have an emotion, right? Whether it's like sadness or heartache or even over attachment to something good, right? We, we let these emotions come in and then we don't let them flow out. We hold on. We're like, no way I'm going to, or sometimes we don't understand them. So we're like, I'm going to grip onto this. Or I'm going to push this down. Like, no, I don't actually want to feel this. And especially when we suppress or don't want to face what we're feeling and we start lodging those down into kind of like our human body system where there's no longer a flow. And so when we do that, that's what creates an energetic block. And when you have an energetic block, then things in the whole system become stagnant, right? And when things become stagnant, sometimes we can mistake these old emotional states of being for who we are, right? And, it, and you just start to kind of live your life based on these emotions that should have flown out of you a long time ago, you know? And so when you sit down and do breath work, breath work makes everything in the body move. It's prana. So when you're breathing through your system, you're breathing through your brain, you're breathing through your blood, you start to... Anything that's lodged, stagnant, stuck, it just starts to bring everything up to the surface. So then you have a beautiful opportunity. You can be like, okay, I'm going to face all this now and let this flow out, you know, or you could lodge it back down, you know, and then the process continues. But breath work, it, may, it creates motion. It forces everything that's in there to the system. And once you bring it to the surface, then you can feel it, you can release it, you can heal it, and then you create more space. You can go even deeper, find something that you lodged down 20 years ago. You're like, oh, no, letting that go. want to open nice. something up for something to come in beautiful right now. Like, I don't want to keep attracting this experience from 30 years years ago you know like I want to be here now so that's kind of my explanation on that that absolutely amazing I mean I feel like anyone and everyone can kind of relate to the tension that we hold right like our body our muscles remember they hold that tension they hold that and it's it's crazy because you know, you always kind of hear like, okay, if you're if you're stressed or anything like that, like take a deep breath, relax for a second. But I remember the first time I took your class, oh my gosh, like the wave of emotions in, a, in the best way possible because the different techniques and the different like speeds of which you breathe and the engagement of your body and the rhythm and all that kind of stuff, like really, like Daniela said, like really allows you to release those emotions, you know? And it was, I had never experienced any kind of breath work like that when I first took your class. I was amazing amazing but with that said could you kind of like go into some of those techniques and and how you use those to release different maybe emotions or just you know anything like that could you kind of explain those a little bit yes of course so I think a, a really beautiful like if you weren't coming to like a specific kundalini class to be guided but these are just some things that kind of you can you can begin with to kind of get you prepped up it's when we think about our body we have these seven energy centers that people refer to as chakras right so your chakras your root your sacral your uh your navel your heart your throat your third eye and your crown okay so these are actual inner energy centers in each of these energy centers in the body it's not just some like new age woo woo like oh like get your shock clear your chakra with some crystals or like whatever it's like no th these are actual electromagnetic uh, uh, electromagnetic fields in your body right and so when these it's each one has its own individual electromagnetic field and so when they're all rotating in harmony that's your that's your aura right that's how you attract things that's how you're protected from things so it's like the most powerful thing ever when these things are blocked and not spinning or even spinning backwards or you're holding on to something from childhood or you know you can't let go of that ex-boyfriend or you don't know what da 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 all these things then your aura kind of gets a little distorted right so you start attracting things that you're actually don't want to experience because you're actually still holding on to them and so a beautiful way to kind of just start getting clear about maybe where you have some stagnancy or some blocked energy is just by starting to go through just a little body scan each a.m of your energy center so like sometimes i'll just sit and then just bring my attention down into my root you know and just kind of sit with that and then just start to take some deep like an inhale and I love exhale open mouths because they just feel so releasing and cleansing to the body inhale kind of like you're fogging up a window I love that technique 
and I'll take like, you know, maybe three to ten breaths in my room. And it's like if any kind of like mental something comes up or it's like hard for me to do, then I know something in there isn't flowing, you know. So like once then you can kind of start to work through those and you move up into like your sexual organs, your sacral, and you're you can even place your hand, or, you know, on, on kind of that area. Take a deep inhale. Exhale. Settle into these areas. So you can start to kind of just identify, like, okay, what am I, what's in there? Is this flowing? Are you feeling good in there? Are you projecting what I want? Or is there something stuck? Or hold, am I holding on to something in there? You can move that way up the body. And then that's, for like, for deep breathing. But then one of my favorite favorite is breath of fire and breath of fire is, I mean it's one of my favorite things I can't do it right now that I'm pregnant but um it's one of my favorite things because like if you think about it like this breath of fire has the ability like the yogi say to burn your karma what does that mean it means that everything we think say and do in the world has a ripple effect so every cause has an effect right you're going to experience that but with breath of fire you actually have the potential to go into your system and because you're able to move any kind of energy blocked or stagnant through the body so quickly through the you get so much oxygen into the body um, that it cleans i like to think of breath work as internal hygiene it's my daily shower it's my internal cleanse of the thoughts, the feelings, the emotions, all that stuff. And Breath of Fire brings so much oxygen into the brain and the body that it literally, things can't exist in there with that amount of oxygen in there. So that's another beautiful technique. Long, slow, deep breathing, just as important. And then Breath of Fire to really get some quick, quick, quick cleansing. Oh my gosh, this is so delicious. I'm like obsessed with this conversation right now. I'm learning so much. I hope everybody in there is like just taking all this information in like a sponge. There's so much goodness here. Um, it's so funny that you talked about the root chakra because in your classes, and again, I'm speaking from experience in your classes, I feel like a lot of the times, and I, I asked you this one time as well, um, but I want, I, I want to hear it again because I want that reminder, but you always say like pull everything up 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 like from like from your from like your root essentially and like pull it up like you're trying to like lift a blueberry into your body you know like and I don't want to get too graphic but you know and so I want to know kind of like what that does is that like part of the is that just to get as as close to that breath like what's the science behind that I guess is I don't know if you probably maybe you've already answered it, but no, yeah, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful question. Um, so when we're doing that, so when you're in class and we're doing these breaths, so think when we're breathing like, and you're generating, you're clearing your system, you're generating, you're bringing all this oxygen in, and then you, so you're literally, quite literally, bringing in energy into your system, right? You're pulling in through your prana. Um, energy so you're gaining energy and whenever we end a breath why I say pull muladhara pull up on mulabanda it's a tight seal kind of like you're holding number one and number two is because your your root is just sitting there right it's just you know relaxed sitting there so when we got done breathing if we don't seal that energy it's it just dissipates you know, it's like, yeah, you did nice breath and it, it feels good and you probably got more oxygen to your system but it just kind of leaks leaks all back out around you back into you know your field when you generate that energy and then you specifically pull up and in on that mola bunda it activates your your bottom so that the energy has to start shooting up through the chakras again so not only is it just down there you actually can pull that up through your spine through each energy center chin slightly down up into your brain so it's just like this over oxygen alkalinity all of this beautiful pure present information that you just get flooded to the system right and why we do that is because so we just moved from the the piscean age to the age of aquarius right so we're in the very beginning of this kind of new age and what's different about that is a shift because in the piscean age we were living from the navel point 
okay? And to, in order to root and ground the Aquarian age on the planet now, we have to move the energy up into the heart or it's not going to work here, you know, because this energy center unbalanced the navel. It's greed. It's the force. It's the, you know, it can be pure will and the will of, you know, goodness and all that, but it's imbalanced right now on the planet. So if we don't get this energy from our navel up to our heart, and the way to do that is by generating enough energy that you have energy to direct up, 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 so you can get it up into a higher center. And so the age of Aquarius, we have to be operating kind of from this heart space area in a very grounded and real form so we can kind of get things balanced and back right here on Earth. I mean, talk about living on purpose. Last week we had we had that a conversation about living on purpose, and a lot of people here was to spread kindness, spread joy, spread love, make an impact on people. And man, Carmela, if I like, I want to like put you on a stage where the entire world can see you, and so you can say this because I feel like there's so many people out there that don't know anything about this and it just you're right there's an imbalance in the world and I feel like if more people just incorporated this or at least had like a sliver of awareness about this we would just be in such a better place um I have a follow-up question kind of so can you explain the fight or flight response in our bodies and how that relates to breath work because I feel like, you know, I think everybody knows like when you're in your fight mode, you're like on and you're breathing heavy and your adrenaline's going and so on and so forth. And a lot of the times I feel like most of us are constantly like in reactive mode or in fight, you know? And um, and I kind of want to know like how can we balance that? How can we be more aware of that in our day to day with our breath? If that makes sense. Total sense. The most sense. Um, I love that you brought that up because we're actually living in a day and age um, where, you know, forces as they be, you know, good, light, dark, whatever, but there's a lot of things set up to work against our natural well-being, right? And there's a lot of things, whether it's just the media, your social media, your addiction to your iPhone, da 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 the ads on TV, the ads as you're driving, the this, the this, consume this, all, I mean, it's constant bombardment, and that's like, like I said, breath work is so big for me, because there's so many things constantly being projected at you that is not from your internal source, that if you don't take the time to clean your system, be your own human air purifying system to your thoughts, your emotions, your body, your blood, your brain, then you are going to take on thoughts and concepts and ideas and things that are not yours. They're, they're things that are being really intentionally programmed so that you think that they're yours, you know, and that's, that's, it's gross. You know, it's gro- and it's not cool, and it's just not very self-sovereign. And so I feel a real responsibility um, to wake up every day and cleanse myself so that when something comes in, I can decipher, is that my own or is that something else, you know? But you have to be very clear and a lot of spaciousness within yourself, which the breath creates, um, to do so. So that was just a little rant. But getting back to that, like I said, you're, we're so bombarded constantly in that survival fight flight or flight and that's why kundalini is one of my favorites because it's really directed for your nervous system and when you think about what your nervous system is it's like you know when people are like i'm nervous or like you know all all of these things it's because quite literally your nerve nervous system isn't strong enough to hold the energy of what you're experiencing right so if something comes in the room if someone you're exchanging with or you go to a job interview or whatever and you feel like you know, some good nerves are good, but just like debilitating, oh, like nervousness or something like that, it's because something comes in with an energy that your energetic system doesn't have the capacity to hold and experience. So it kind of either shuts down, it just blocks it out, it, just, it, it does anything but to sit there and exp- uh, respond. And so when we can drop in to we have our survival our sympathetic nervous system and we have our parasympathetic nervous system and that's what breath work drops you into and so your parasympathetic nervous system is your rest and digest 
So you have your flight, fight or flight, and you have your rest and digest. And so when you start to take deep breaths into the body, you immediately start to drop. It's in, a deep breath is literal information to your brain to say, slow down, relax, everything's good, you're safe, we got this. That's, that's literally pretty much what the information is. It's a that literally tells your brain, we're good. Like, I got you. Like, we're safe. Like, whatever this is, we're good with that. Uh, yeah. Like, so it's at any at any given moment, um, we can drop ourselves into there. And it's not, like you said, it's the most simple thing. It's just when you feel yourself in that cycle, when you feel like it's do 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 and you're not controlling that, do I have just one moment to take three deep breaths? Do I have a moment to just let my jaw relax? Mm -hmm. Can I let my shoulders fall a little bit away from my ears? You know, can I not clench my glutes? Can I just really ground into the seat that I'm in right here? Um, and that automatically drops you into that parasympathetic nervous system. And your parasympathetic nervous system is the only place that healing can take place in the body. Your parasympathetic nervous system is where true creativity, where true answers flow to the body. And so that's why sometimes when people can't figure anything out and, you know, when you're like, meditate. Okay, so what, how does meditating help Like when you just sit down, do nothing, and maybe start to focus on your breath? Because your breath literally draws in information into your system that raises you to a new frequency where solutions can actually flow in. If you're constantly operating on this frequency, not knowing what to do, the right answer probably isn't going to come on that frequency. You have to bring energy in through the breath, raise your frequency, and then it's like, you it's just each new dimension presents a whole new range of possibilities, answers, solutions that you don't even have to think about because they just exist on that level. So when you raise yourself there, then you receive those answers. You receive that kind of reality, that life. Oh my gosh, I am like sitting here in awe. Um, so I love, I just, I love that you're, you know, touching on both the science, the physical and the mental and the emotional and all that stuff because the biggest thing of this series of chats that we've been kind of talking about is the idea of holistic fitness, right? So beyond just the physical, beyond just the workout, about all the emotional, the psychological, the everything. So it's just, it's, it's, absolutely amazing to hear all of the benefits that you get from just taking that time to breathe um so first off thank you so so much for sharing all that um i do want to give people on the call just a chance to ask any questions um if anybody on here does have any questions please feel free now is the chance um not you know we still we still have some time but if you have Please, uh, please go ahead and raise your hand and we can unmute you guys. Otherwise, we got plenty more questions, so don't worry. <laughs> we'll give it a couple more seconds. Anybody have any questions they want to ask while we're on here? Going once. Going twice. Let's get <laughs> okay, well, in the meantime, feel free to raise your hands, you guys, if you do have questions, of course. Um, I would like to ask a... Oh, Crystal, go ahead. Hey, thank you for sharing all that imp wonderful information. I was actually wondering, um, with the breathing that you're talking about, how does that, um, I guess, is that much different than like the ujjayi breath or is um is would you consider it more beneficial or how do they differ so we totally we to, ujjayi is definitely something that i use during class and practice it's just more so in the kundalini yoga that i teach um there's just specific there's specific breath patterns, like I said, like the breath of fire or segmented breath where you're breathing in for like, just there's a million different patterns. So no, like what I'm trying to say is there's not really a difference. You could always use your ujjayi within the kundalini practice. So it's like if, um, if I'm saying in class, you know, inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose. If you know how to utilize your ujjayi within that breath, 
totally, totally do it. So I wouldn't say there's any, no, there's nothing, there's nothing different. Um, there's just specific breath patterns that we do in Kundalini that um, cue you into certain rhythms with your breath. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Awesome. Anybody else have a question? Okay. Well, in the meantime, I would like to ask um, for somebody that, <clears throat> excuse me, for somebody that is brand new to breath work, right? If somebody's like, oh my gosh, I've never done this before. I've never taken a class. Like, I guess, what do you recommend? How do you recommend starting? Is there like maybe a certain amount of times they should be doing it? Like any, any tips for a beginner that, that you might have are welcome. Yeah, so when I get this a lot, you know, my, my classes are like 20 minutes. And, you know, typically if someone hasn't done it before after the class, they're like, that was insane in an amazing way, but like maybe like one of the hardest things I've ever done. You know, like we were in that breath for three minutes and it felt like four years. And so with any – Kundalini is just – and that's another thing, Crystal. It's like it's – um. The, the breaths, like Ujjayi, like you said, you can just take that like long, slow, and deep. And Kundalini, they cue you into some different movements and postures that are completely new to the system. Because like when you're breathing in new ways, when you're moving in new ways, it opens up new spaces inside the body and the mind. When there's new spaces inside the body and the mind, then th new things have to show up in your reality. That's just how, that's what manifestation is. Is you create the space, you create the lightness internally, and then it has to reflect because that's just what life does on the external level right and um so what i would say is like if you're a beginner coming to like a kundalini yoga class i think it's always beautiful to stay in the in the breaths for as long as cued and sometimes it can seem unimaginable but within those times always remember to listen to your body and take it at your own pace so like I tell people if we're in breath of fire and you feel like you're about to pass out um you know, if you feel like you're about to pass out take a moment and just take up some slow deep breaths and then hop back in you know if we're in a posture and you're all like you know if you can distinguish the pain with discomfort you know like if I can stay here and really shadow and shatter a mental paradigm do it but also don't injure yourself you know what I mean so it's it's and that's only something that each person you know with even fitness and things like that it's something that you can only assess for yourself you know and so I like to tell people to come in and get your foundation proper right before you just try to like go go not sometimes people can come in completely flow with the practice but sometimes it's so new that you do want to just take it take it super slow so if at any moment during the practice you just kind of need to stop chill get your bearings together then I highly I always highly encourage that as well um, but if you were saying, like, if you weren't coming to a class and you were just practicing on your own, I think a beautiful place to start would be, like, three minutes in the a.m. right when you get up, a breath of fire. And so breath of fire is simply um, equal inhale, equal exhale through the nose, and it's no deeper than a sniff. So you're not, it's not that, it's just a little sniff, like, and I like to think of it as like if I was new to it, I would like to think in my mind it's like inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And then once you kind of get that rhythm with your nose, you can start to um, synchronize your belly moving with that. So when you inhale, your belly fills up a little bit. When you exhale, you bring it back towards the spine. So I think a beautiful place for anybody to begin would be like three minutes of daily breath of fire um, and then three minutes of long doing kind of doing that chakra check, long, slow, deep breaths into each of your energy centers. Beautiful. I love that. That's, that's, I think that's like an easy thing mm -hmm. we can incorporate. Anybody can incorporate into their day, you know, something that's just like, yeah, I got three minutes, you know, just to incorporate, like put, set your alarm for three minutes. But like, you know, if you're supposed to wake up at six 30, wake up at six 27, mm -hmm. you know, and just like give yourself those extra three minutes to do that and start to incorporate it. Um, I love that so much. Uh, Eric, I know you hopped off and then hopped back on, but I, I don't know why. I have a feeling you have a question, so feel free to ask it. Um, if you don't, obviously, no pressure, <laughs> but I feel like you would. Um, and we are going to wrap up soon. Um, we want to kind of wrap up with a little five minutes of uh, Carmela guiding us through a little bit of breathwork so that you guys can all get a little 
taste of um, what she's all about, which I'm sure you guys are already obsessed as equally as we are. Um, I highly, highly, highly recommend everybody taking her class and experiencing her magic because it truly, that is what it is. It is magic. Uh, and I think every, so many more people, I wish so many more people could get their hands on you, girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so does anybody have any last questions? Feel free to raise your hand if so. If not, it's all well and good. Um, and I think that now would be a wonderful time, I guess, then to to jump into a little breathing, if that's cool for everybody. Let's do awesome. it. Awesome. Okay. All right, you guys. Get ready to experience the magic. <laughs> okay. well, let's all just create some heat between the hands. We'll be here for a little mini practice in Kundalini. I'm just going to tune us in pretty quickly with the mantra that directs the consciousness. And it's just Ong Namo Guru Dave Namo. I bow to the teacher inside myself. I bow to the teacher within all. We'll just inhale as we bring our hands to heart center. Ong Guru Dave Namo. Inhale into the belly. Ong I want to do one more breath, and I think this is 
such a beautiful breath that everybody also, if you can incorporate this for three minutes every day, it's the yogis just talk about it being like the most effective immune booster, antibacterial, antiviral. So I think in the day and age we're living in, it's something to tap into that internal immunity. And it's a little funky, but just um, stay with me. What we're going to do is you're going to stick your tongue out. It's called dog breath, dog pant. We're going to stick our uh, tongue out as far as we can towards the chin. And we're just going to start to breathe kind of like a breath of fire through the back of the throat. So it's going to be like this. So channel your dog. Channel your dog when it's trying to cool off. Stay here with me. We're going to be here for a minute. You might start to feel a little uncomfortable, but just stay here with me. It's going to bring a lot of energy into the system. Here we go. as far as you can it's super relaxing to the sympathetic nervous system to open the mouth last 35 seconds last 35 seconds let's see if we can pick that pant up just a little bit goodness it's always such a treat i gets better every time thank you so 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 much carmela for guiding us through that and of course for all your little nuggets of wisdom oh my gosh i hope everybody took so so much away um please 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 go follow her get to into her class there's plenty plenty more where you can experience that that was just a taste but oh my gosh that was beautiful thank you and where can we follow you, Carmela? Can you let us know? I have an Instagram, and it's at Tribe Called Breath. So you can follow there. And then if you ever want to hop in a class, all my classes are 20 minutes long. We're in and out. We just get super activated, rewire, and um, you can sign up for any of them. They're all completely donation-based, so if monetary exchange is not an option, your presence is more than enough. We just want to get people elevated, feeling good, feeling balanced. And you can sign up for the classes at tribecalledbreath.com. I mean, what a movement, no? What a movement. Like, this is absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. And, yeah, guys, I'm sure I, I'm so curious to hear about everybody's experience um, with even just those five minutes. I mean, even just those five minutes, there were part of me sometimes where I was like, oh, my gosh, this is hard. Oh, my gosh, this is hard. Oh, my gosh, am I going to be able to do this? Like, my tongue felt dry. Like, 
all these experience, these uncomfortable, quote unquote, uncomfortable experiences that we experience, yet how incredibly powerful and how calm and relaxed and at ease I feel after the fact. And it's one of those things where, you know, when you put yourself in a situation like that, which is something that we innately do, breathing is something that we innately do, and then we put ourselves and we compare that to other things in our lives where things are hard. We have, there are challenges that we that we have to face in our everyday life, you know? Challenges like the ones we faced, you know, this past year and a half where, you know, guess what? Those were hard things and we 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 got through them. We're still here to to tell the tale and you know, it's just one of those things that it even like it's just it's just 20 minutes, right? 20 minutes of breathing. And that just shows you your power and it shows you like your inner knowing of how how powerful we can really be if we can be that powerful in our bodies and survive those moments where we're literally giving our bodies that life and that energy. We can survive anything out there that challenges us and that, that, that um, you know, gives us obstacles. It's just such a beautiful reminder. Um, so I just couldn't be more thankful and grateful for knowing you and for being in your presence and uh thank you so much for giving your time to us this is just uh, i mean like louise said it's a treat so thank you thank you thank you oh i think sergio has one thing to say before we wrap up join us join us sergio hi carmela um i just want to tell you thank you want to let everybody know um i've been working with carmela for i don't know how many months um but i like working with you has benefited me so much like to the point where when I'm jogging and I just to like um, find that energy to, to go with that extra push I literally think of you and I, and I do some of like some breathing technique just to push me through um, and that's just like one one example but the um, classes that I've taken with you have really helped me and I just want to tell you thank you Sergio, I love you. I mean, you're, every time you're in the class, I mean, my day just gets a million times better. So thank you for your presence and for bringing this heartfelt Aquarian energy what we need to class every single time. Um, I'm so happy that you think about me in that way. I, I think True. about you in that exact same way. And um, I'm just, I'm blessed to definitely have you a part of the community. Thank you. Yes. Well, that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sergio, for sharing that. I mean, it's just, yeah, I, look, we are blessed. We are blessed to have this community. We are blessed to have all of you guys in our lives. I'm just, you know, I, I'm on cloud nine right now. <laughs> You guys, this was the most amazing chat. Thank you all for being here, for joining. Thank you so much again, Carmela. Everyone go follow her right now. Right now, go follow her at Tribe Called Breath. And go check out her classes because I'm telling you, you're, it's life-changing. Um, thank you so much, Carmela. You're the best. We love you. I love you, too. Have a beautiful evening. Everybody have a beautiful week. Um, and I guess I look forward, if anybody has any even beginner questions or anything, don't hesitate to DM me. And like I said, monitor, it's all donation-based. Just get in there and elevate. You don't have to turn your camera on. You can't turn your camera on, whatever it is. Um, we're just happy to get people in there cleaning it out, that internal hygiene, baby. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Amen to that. I Amen. know. Oh, all right, you guys. Have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your evening. We will see you guys very soon. Stay tuned for next week. We're going to have another awesome guest. Um, so just keep keep checking out that Instagram and your newsletter for more information. And hopefully we'll see you guys in class again soon as well. Okay. Um, love to all. Love you guys. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.